So I started working on a little swatch. Oops, everything's falling on the floor. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and I am coming to you from Texas. It is Wednesday, January 23rd, and it's kind of cold here today. We started out in the 30s, and now it's like a sunny 50, which is really nice, so I got all cozied up today. Um, I'll tell you what I'm wearing first, and then I'll do a little more of an introduction, but um, this is the Honey Cowl, and it was really popular a few years ago, well, maybe more than a few years ago, but the Honey Cowl is by Antonia Shankland. Had to look that up. And then I'm wearing my Areed sweater. Let me show you the back of it. Can you see? I don't know. <laughs> maybe you could see, maybe you couldn't, but it actually has a gorgeous lace panel on the back. And I'll put the maker down at the bottom because um, her name is like uh, Meiju, I think, and her last name was two initials. So I wanna make sure I get that right. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. It's keeping me nice and warm. I have a guest, he's back. Um, our other, uh, the dog that we were watching is back with my mother-in-law. So it's just me and Toaster. And um, I thought he would like to come down here. So you'll hear him clicking around. Um, also, there's some laundry going and I, I'm sure you can hear it. I'm sure you can hear it when it cuts off because um, you'll hear some noise go away. Um, so I'm sorry about that. My husband put some laundry in and I couldn't be mad at that, right? I got home from work and it was already going, so. Oh well. Um, but yeah, so my name is Natalie. Like I said, this is my third podcast. So thank you so much if you're returning to listen again. And if you're new, hello, welcome. Um, I am going to do a little more of an introduction than I would normally. And I have some announcements and then we'll get into knitting. So um, like I said, I live in Texas. I live in the Dallas area. There are tons of knitters in Texas. Um, I am a teacher. I teach elementary school reading. Um, I'm an interventionist, so I pull kids from their classrooms to my classroom and teach them in small groups, which is a lot of fun. Um, what else? Uh, I live with my husband and my dog Toaster that you can probably hear. He's, there he is. <laughs> um, but I was, going on this trend of sharing like a fun fact every week and this week my fun fact is actually part of an coming with an announcement so let me make my announcement first so i have a ravelry group all you need to do is search love and stitches or you can um just like extend that menu below the youtube video and i'll have the link there to my ravelry group so we already have 10 members which is cool because i haven't made that announcement anywhere um, but what you can find in the group is just it's just going to be a group of knitters and crocheters everyone is welcome to join um, just a collection of people who love and share a passion for knitting and crochet um, i'll have a thread for each episode so as um, episodes go on and you need to ask a question you can definitely ask it there um, also it's got all my links so like my Instagram my blog my patterns they're all in uh, included at the top of that group um, I'm hoping that as things go on that there will be even more fun things that we can host in the group but for right now there's the laundry. <laughs> Can you hear it singing? I love it. Um, but yeah, so the, my Ravelry group is called Love and Stitches. Um, what I am going to add as a thread is a fun, like, I'm just going to call it fun facts. So if you want to go in there, introduce yourself and share a fun fact, I will answer the same, like, fun fact prompt on the podcast as the weeks go on. So I hope that makes sense. I'll have an explanation in there. But one of my Ravelry um, members actually started a thread called How Did You or How Did We Start, I believe. And uh, this is a thread where you can go and share how you got started in knitting or crochet or knitting and crochet. And just tell us a little bit about yourself um, through that history. So I asked um, Dee if I could share his story and he said yes. So I'm actually gonna read it from my computer so I don't get his story wrong. And here we go. 
<laughs> because even though I am not, I don't feel like I, this is age appropriate, maybe it's all the Instagramming, but I've got to wear reading glasses. I have contacts, but I've got to wear reading glasses in order to read this. So here we go. All right, this is Dee's story, and then I'll share my story on how I got started. So this is Dee. I love to know how people started their crafting journey and the beginnings of a yarn addiction. I am Dee. I started knitting at eight years old. My sister and I often spent time with grandma. My sister had no interest in learning, but my grandma noticed I wanted to learn and never looked back. So that was Dee's story. Um, so go on over to that Ravelry group, Love and Stitches. We can take those off now. And tell us a little bit about yourself and about your story for how you got started. So um, here's my fun fact for the week. This is how I got started with knitting. Um, I started knitting before I learned to crochet. So when I was about 14, I think, 13 or 14, um, I was at a ballet camp in Houston. I, I shared a little bit about that last week. Um, but I noticed this girl, she was sitting on the floor outside of uh, the ballet classes and she was knitting on something. And little did I know that she was knitting on something very complicated. I think she was using double pointed needles and she was doing color work of some kind. Um, I don't know if she was making a sleeve or a sock or a mitten, I have no idea. But I just remember, um, I think our other peers kind of thought she was odd. And so I went over to her and I was like, that's really awesome, like that's so cool. And I don't know if she took it the right way or thought I was um, kind of messing around with her, but it really piqued my interest. So when I came home from that camp, I asked my grandmother to teach me how to knit. So she cast on for me, taught me the knit stitch. I, you know, I'm sure I didn't pick it up right away, but I kind of caught on to it and then she um, showed me pearl and then she, that was it. That was like the extent <laughs> of her knowledge of knitting. So I, for a few years, I was kind of um, making stuff up. Like I would make up my own cast on and bind off. I would take a needle and just like back forth sew it through the live stitches which was awful but i made an entire blanket that way maybe i'll show it to you next time it's in the ottoman that i'm sitting on an entire blanket out of homespun which is really soft but it is hard to knit with it has that thread that goes through it anyway i made a blanket out of homespun that was one of the first projects i remember um and then what happened from there is I had a love of dance and that just faded out. And pretty much at the same time, I found myself at a yarn store at Bliss Yarns in Brentwood, Tennessee. And that's when a new passion ignited for knitting. So I just happened to be right place, right time, hanging out there in the summers when I was off from high school. And I landed an after school job at a yarn store when I was 16. So of course, um, when you're surrounded by people who love knitting and people who are passionate, you pick up a lot of stuff and you get really into it. So I would say since then, the only really time off I've had from knitting was in college. And I really regret that. I wish I could go back and be more confident um, and, and have more like do more knitting and you know knit during class and all that stuff um, but i learned to crochet in high school um one of my friends taught me to crochet and i remember being so frustrated i knit holding the yarn in my right hand so like english style standard style there's a lot of different names for it when i learned to crochet i had to hold tension the yarn in my left hand man that was really tough i still struggle with crochet knowing where my stitches or where like that last stitch should be. And only in the past two years have I felt more confident in crochet. So that's a little bit about my journey. So go over to the Ravelry group and share your journey with us. I would love to read it. All right, let's talk about knitting now. So I have a half finished object. I have finished um, the sock that I started last week. So this is going to be my newest design, but it is not coming out till February 14th. It just went off to testers yesterday. So I would love to share a little bit more about it. So this yarn is from uh, Malia Made It, and she dyed this self-striping yarn for Valentine's Day. I'm still not sure if she has 
revealed the colorway. So I won't say it quite yet, but I'm sure by next week I can mention it because she has um, orders, I think, in her Etsy shop already. So Malia designed this yarn for Valentine's Day for a very specific um, color. Uh, so it's really pretty. And she asked me to design a self-striping sock pattern. And I have come up with this. So basically, um, it's got texture and then it's got these bands of uh, bobbles almost. So they're not really bobbles in the sense that you have to go back and forth knitting them, um, but they do kind of create a bobble texture. And then the texture pattern continues down the top of the foot. And of course you've got a smooth bottom of the foot, which because her yarn is so pretty, it still looks so beautiful. Um, so yeah, this pattern is off to testers. Um, a lot of them got the same color, but some went with a different color. So I'm excited to see how theirs turn out. Um, I did the Fish Lips Kiss heel on mine and I made mine cuff down, but with um, all of my sock patterns, except for the 40 yard dash pattern, they're available um, cuff down and toe up come in one pattern. So for $4, you're getting both versions of the pattern. So this one will be the same way. There'll be, uh, once you do the single download, you get both PDFs. Yeah, so I'm sure I'll be talking about this more. Um, I think I brought my other one down. Oh, it looks like I didn't. I've started the second one and I'm only to like right here. <laughs> so I haven't even gotten into this texture pattern yet, but they're really fine. They're um, super memorizable. You're actually guiding, um, the pattern is guided by the stripes and not by row count. So you kind of get to play with uh, color manipulation and work that out. Yeah, so um, Malia made it socks and uh, I just, I don't know, I'm excited about this. I guess I have no words, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think that's backwards, there we go. These uh, sock blockers I get at DFW Fiberfest um, from a vendor called Perfectly Catchy Designs. It's perfect with two R's, U and two R's. Um, I believe she vends, I don't know which way is backwards and forwards. That's Ford's. Okay, she vends, I think, at different um, shows. I'm not sure where she's actually located, but you can buy these sock blockers on eBay from her shop. So just search Perfectly Catchy Designs and she's got like dozens of different cutouts. This is the medium size. I wear a women's, US women's um, eight in tennis shoes. And these are, I would say they're just a little bit big for my foot. Um, I do have the small size too, and those are just a tad small. So just know, I would rather have some good stretch in there and then wear them than have them not block out and open up the pattern, but yeah. Okay, I have also been working on my sweater and it doesn't look like I've done much because I really haven't. Um, I really only worked on this on Thursdays, which is when I go to knit night, which is a real shame. I should work on it other times too. Um, but this is the Canyon. Uh, the pattern is just called Canyon, but I always say Canyon cardigan because it's a cardigan. This is by Devin Ventre, who's Knitting with Curly. So I've got this bottom part all done. It's kind of cute. It's like a little skirt. And now I have picked up stitches and I am working on this section here. So my little waffle progress keeper is from Sucre Sucre Miniatures got a pat of butter on it. And that's where I was last week. I had yet to pick up the stitches. So I've done a couple inches. Um, now I'm working on the part that comes like from here up and over. And then after that, I'll have sleeves and a band. So I'm far from finished, but it does feel good to be on a new section. And this part here is so simple. It's just stockinette and a few increases. It's been perfect to work on while we've been watching Harry Potter movies. Okay, so not much work on that one, but maybe I'll have a little more for next week. Okay, I have been working on a swatch for a new design. So if you know Ashley, who is AK Knits on Instagram, she posted a few months ago, um, it was a store-bought infinity scarf and it was a really cool like texture it had fuzzy thin yarn and a thicker yarn that alternated and it kind of looked like a ribbing or something and she was wondering if somebody could recreate it so i finally i'd been searching for the perfect yarn that would kind of be similar to that store-bought scarf 
And I found it, I showed it, um, I think I showed it before, but this right here is a um, Malabrigo. And I believe it's their worsted. It's like a single ply and it's kind of got different um, thick, thin a little bit. And then this is not gonna show very well cause I've got it in my yarn socks. But this is Primrose and it's a mohair and there's so much more color in there than it's showing, um, but it's super pretty. So I started working on a little swatch. Oops, everything's falling on the floor. Ah, okay. I've got just a little swatch. I've, this is the second one that I've done. The first one, of course, is never quite right, but I think I'm getting closer. So I'm wondering, can you see how it's like an alter, alternating thicker yarn and thinner yarn? And of course it would not be this skinny. This is just a swatch, but I'm wondering, what do you guys think? Would you make a scarf or an infinity scarf that kind of had this alternating thicker and thinner? I think it's pretty cool. It's got a really nice texture to it. And I'm hoping that once I get it, I need to make a bigger swatch and block it and see how it weighs. Cause I think it would just be like a good scarf like this one where you can wear it the loop all the way out or you can bundle it up. But yeah, so I'm working on that next design since the sock is off to testers. And then I wanted to show you one more project. Um, this is a scrappy project and I really don't do so well doing scrappy Sunday and working on things every Sunday. Um, but this is my granny stripe blanket. So it is, you know, it's substantial. It's more than a scarf now. Um, it's not a snake. It's definitely more than that. Um, and I only did like a couple of colors. I think I only did like one and a half rows on this because it is so wide. <laughs> Mine is crazy. Okay, so this is half of it. Yeah. And I don't remember how many I uh, chained to start, but you can go to my Ravelry page. What you'll have to do though is either scroll all the way down to the bottom of my project page or look at hibernating projects because I have it hibernating. If I don't work on something, if I'm not like working constantly on it, I'll go hibernate it in Ravelry so it's not showing at the top of my project page and stressing me out to finish it. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's just, it's that um, pattern by Attic 24, Lucy of Attic 24. And it's just a three, double crochet three um, granny stripe. But right now from about, I think this purple up, I've been putting in my Harry Potter um, advent minis from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. So I totally think this will spill. Oh no, that's not bad. So I've got all those still to go. I've only got four of them in so far. And I am using a D hook. I use Clover Amours or yeah, Amour, which I always thought was called Armor until I was watching several Instagram people talk and they were calling them Amours and I was like, no, they're called armor. And then I looked and sure enough, a more. But these are my favorite hooks. My dog started barking like a maniac. I think he's still going to. Anyway, that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.